I'm already in a pissed off mood, chat. Good job. I couldn't be more pissed already to start before we're even going. You know what I've realized? Hi. Welcome to the program. I, you know what I've realized? Everyone, everyone's fucking dumb. Nobody knows what they're talking about. Nobody. Nobody. Ever. Ever. Every single person you know is wrong about everything they've ever said. I'm watching our chat. I don't even. I'm going to shut it. I'm going to close it now. I'm going to let you know. And it's, I, I know that I'm not good enough. So I have to physically go over here and do it. I have to actually not be able to see it. So it's gone now. I'm a super tip boy. If that's how you chat with me from now on. I got to tell you, I, I, I can't even wrap my head around the brand of stupid. Some of you have chosen for your personality. It, it's painful. I watched one guy before the show. <laughs> you know, I like to come back. I scroll through the chat. I watch one guy. He goes, come on. You don't have to do the pre-screening stuff. Just start the show. I don't even know what that means. I don't even know. The pre-screening stuff? What am I screening? You know, I don't even I don't even know what's more retarded. That you think you know what you're talking about or that you made up a word for it. You know, I can't even pick which one of those things is dumber in my brain. Then I see Hackverse Anonymous. Seconds before the end of the song that we always play before we start a show. He goes, come on, start the show already. Oh. Oh. Hadn't occurred to me. Hadn't occurred to me. You're right. I'll probably shut the end of the song off and just start the show. Never done that. And you can tell the song's wrapping up. But Hackverse Anonymous couldn't take it anymore. There were 13 seconds left and Hackverse Anonymous had to go. Come on, just start the show. Oh. Oh. I had never thought about it like that. I had never thought about it like that. I was actually sitting here finishing up some crocheting I was doing. And, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I was busy pre-screening. I don't even, like, people make up words that I'm busy doing. I can't, I can't do it. And now I'm calm. Now I'm calm. I've hidden the chat, so I'm calm. I, everybody can yell about how dumb I am and what a spurg and got him. Melt meltdowns. We got him. We got him. It doesn't matter to me. Calm. Look at his sign. It's falling apart again. Calm. I don't care. I don't care. When I look up, all I see is how many people are watching. Hey, crumb bum, put down the bottle and stop starting fights. With everyone, you Florida trash weirdo. I saw the inside you did the sign. I found more sign. We need shine. So I say, I say, why I am here? Saki gagi gan here like two cock fry. I mean, I think Tuki might still be drunk from New Year's. That was not even close. I found money in my pee. Is what he was trying to say. And also, Crumb Bomb is a contentious motherfucker. I don't know. Everybody has a problem with Crumb Bomb. What's going on? Why is everybody fighting with Crumb Bomb all of a sudden? Gino, Keanu, and Stevie are destroying AC like the toothless streetwalkers begging for change. I love it. I love it. Uh, Rerun, thanks for joining up. And Flex... Uh, gifting another membership, continuing his generosity from earlier today. Look, um, I love it. 
I couldn't be more happy. I had to come on and just express my giddiness uh, at every time we can expose Chad for being a lying fraud that he is. Every minute we can expose this fucking guy for the lying fraud that he is. I love it. I'm there for it. And you know, to be so jealous of Stevie Lou that you come on acting like a child. I mean, that MLC appearance, one of the most childish, babyish Chad Zumox we've ever seen. Literally throwing a, an adult tantrum because Stevie Lou is getting some attention. All of this, all of Chad's insane paranoia and feelings of inadequacy, imposter syndrome, anger, lashing out, cries for attention, made up stories. All of his, all of his bloviating about friends and I introduced you to him and I wish I never brought this guy to you and I knew him longer and I knew him first. It's all just so pathetic really when you boil it down you really realize how sad of a man chad is at age 50. i realize you know as this goes on and it gets closer chad's starting to panic you know chad chad wanted to go do a show because he's a comedian and he doesn't know what else to do. He knows, he knows this, Chad knows this. If he has to sit around with other comics and even other super chatters of this program and MLC, his ability to be funny is extremely watered down and diminished because not only is everyone in this universe funnier than Chad, the chatters are funnier than Chad. The fans are funnier than Chad. So Chad can't just come hang out, shoot the shit, and feel like a normal guy. Plus, he'll get super drunk super fast. It'll, it'll be embarrassing. So Chad has to throw an event, and he's a comic, so we're going to put on a show. And Chad doesn't have any friends. Again, all the stuff about friends is projection. Nobody, no adult in their right mind at this age talks about friends like this. I have more friends. I have this many friends. I have more friends that are older friends, and I've been friends with him longer, and I introduced him to you, and you, I wish I would have never brought you two together, and I. Insane. For a 50-year-old man, these are your accomplishments that you choose to continually highlight over and over again so pretty pathetic pretty fucking sad when you think about it and then chad's heading up to jersey new york area he's gonna make the rounds in new york and do a bunch of shows because he hasn't made he hasn't been on the new york scene in forever and people asked him today when was the last time you performed in new york he couldn't answer that it'd be embarrassing because the answer would be like 2019 2018 you know something crazy which is, which is pathetic because I performed in New York last year. You know what I mean? Like, yikes. Yikes. Oh, wait. Two years ago now. 2022. I forget it's New Year. So forgive me for my Fib Fibonacci sequence. I call my lies Fibonacci sequence. Chad, I believe my singing and my basic white boy podcast will always outlast your money. Grab gimmick while KB should. I don't oh, know. Smothered you and boost Stevie Lou. Because Donkey Lips today said a good month for him on YouTube is 200 bucks. So that's wild to me. Anyway, um, so Chad, Chad decided he's going to do a show in Atlantic City. And remember, this is before I'm coming, before all this stuff. And he realizes very quickly, like, Nobody he knows would come do this show. It's in a garbage hole. This place doesn't even have other events. They, like, don't even go look at their calendar. They have one day 
where they're having events. And this is in the winter, too, where there should be entertainment. So Chad invites me, and I turn him down, and then Chad invites Ray, and then Ray turns him down, and then Chad invites Gino, and Gino turns him down. And me, mind you, Chad didn't do any of this directly. He did it all through Ken Mosca, Teamster Tim, and through the podcast. I challenge Melton. So Chad didn't book anybody traditionally, and now there's a big in the misunderstanding whether Gino and Keanu are going to do the show. I have a feeling they never intended to do this show. They never knew it was real. Ken Mosk is an idiot. I've never met the guy, but he seems like a real maroon. And so now Chad is starting to see some of Gino's wavering and go like, hold on, is Gino not going to show? Because if Gino doesn't show, the whole show is just Chad and, uh, you know, Chad. And we are we already know the ticket sales are going to be light. You know, even even the morbidly curious who are going there, which I've urged not to believe us, we're going to we'll get a tape of it. But you'll have 10 or 15 stragglers in there. Chad doing a set. If Gino and Keanu don't show, he needs other people. So he starts doing this panic thing. He invites Tony Mazur. Now, Tony Mazur is the only person on the lineup he's friends with. Tony Mazur, who lives in Ohio, right? So he's coming in for this. But not one comic Chad knows in Jersey or New York would he even dare ask to do this show. And he keeps making this statement that I'm doing it to be weird. I wanted to make it weird. No, I thought it'd be crazy and weird. Then why bring Mazer? Mazer's your friend. Now, Mazer's the only serious guy you could really ask to do this show. I'm flaking on you. Ray's not doing it. Gino might flake on you. And then you invite Stevie Lou, and you didn't think Stevie Lou would accept. Stevie Lou accepts. Stevie Lou will do the gig. And then you backpedal. As Chad does, backs down from every challenge he issues straight out of movies playbook. I'll fly Melton out here to box me. Okay. Well, he's got to fly out here. He's got to get a card. He's got to go get registered. He's got to get a suit measured. He's got to, you know, it's like, okay. Wow. It really got really complicated really quick. So now Stevie Lou wants to go out and do Chad's show. Chad's like, you're a clown. I only invited you because I was clowning you. And you were just too dumb to know that. So now Stevie Lou's not allowed to do the show. And now Chad's doing one of the most pathetic begging acts you've ever seen in your life. We're going to go over Chad's whole show on Thursday on my show. It's one of the most back to, we have to watch the whole hour. It might be my whole show on Thursday because it's one of the most pathetic things you'll ever see in your life. Again, this is Chad's playbook, though. You know, he's, he has a real trouble with personality. He thinks it's hats. He thinks it's hats. I'm the mud shark. I'm Crocodile Dundee. I'm from the Newsies. It's like, pick a, pick a personality, man, you know? So um, Chad has trouble playing bully or victim, so he constantly alternates between both, and it comes out ineffective in both categories, you know, because... On the one hand, he's like, Gino, you better do the show. Do you think I need you to do the show? I don't. I don't. I asked you to clown you. But you better do it. You're not going to do it now? Come on, do the show. Nobody wants you to do the show, Gino. It's like, what the fuck? It's hard to even keep up with, you know, the sentiment of it all. Because he keeps alternating between desperate and... You know, you can't fire me. I quit. It's really insane. It's one of the most unhinged shows Chad's ever done. Back to back. And you don't need to sign up for Chad's membership. We're going to watch the whole thing for free on my show Thursday. Don't, don't give the mud shark a dollar. You don't have to do that. You don't have to walk around with that guilt, that heavy feeling in your heart. 
that you gave money to Chad for him to just spend on cocaine. I think he's doing cocaine. I think he's doing cocaine. I think Chad's doing cocaine. <laughs> I really do. I, there's no other explanation. I, I guess he doesn't have the money for cocaine. I, I don't know what he's on. I mean, I've never seen a more pathetic adult. If I was a family member of his, I'd, I'd constantly be trying to get him committed into a some sort of facility to just aid him living his life. I, I Again, or, or screaming out at Stevie Lou. And everybody knows. Everybody knows this is what a jealous, insecure motherfucker looks and sounds like. Everybody but Chad. Chad doesn't see it. I'm not jealous. I'm not jealous of him at all. You even say it like a kid would in a movie. It's like, it's, it's pathetic. It's dripping with patheticism. Is that a word? Patheticism. Could you please <laughs> explain to me once more about this voice tip feature? Okay. Uh, I'm very interested in procuring your services here. As I can't afford to give 30% to YouTube, with said savings, I wish, uh, I'll be able to purchase a new wall banging stick and new tennis balls uh, for the bottom of my walker because I really will one day, someday, I promise to a walkie talkie. Uh, hi, Pam. I've never seen someone make more excuses. Is that St. Ranger? Hi, Pam. Hi, Pam. Anyway, um, really great stuff. And I, and I, uh, and I don't know where this is going. And look, I'm about to take a little break. I'm about to go on a vacation. So I, I, got, I got a very short week this week. And uh, I won't be here at all for a while. So it's good luck without me. Good luck. Not that you need me, but good luck without me. I mean, no one knows what's going on. Not that I know everything that's going on, but no one knows anything that's going on. Hey, you don't have to do the pre-screening. Huh? Like, I don't even know what that is. Much less is it what I was doing. It's really hard. It's really tough for me. I, I don't know what brand of autism I have. What my particular affliction is. No doubt it's bad. I get it. I'm I'm broken, but I you know. You look around and you go, I just never like as a child, I never ever thought it would be like this. I never ever like because it didn't exist when I was a kid. You didn't have 50-year-old men who didn't have it figured out unless they just got out of jail. You know, everybody had an uncle or something. He had to crash on the couch for a few weeks while he got a job and saved up some money. <laughs> but, like, in general, adults had jobs. They went to work. They had it figured out. Now, I grow up. I look around. It's like I'm dealing with 50-year-old men who still think one day, you know, I don't know what. I don't know what they think one day. Because every story Chad has is about the rear view mirror. It's about the past. I used to write for roasts. So that's when I got an official credit from writing credit from Comedy Central. It's like, no, you didn't. I mean, there's no other way to put it. No, you didn't. As if roasts don't have credits. Pull it up. Pull it up. I reused some of the jokes I wrote for the roast. <laughs> Why don't you just say you copied roast jokes, Chad? Oh, so you did you take earring to Zai to Chi? Well, hey, well, man, keep the gen funk, the Siju Yan Yuan, cut a chengong. Is that a is that ch 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 Taiwanese? Is that Asian? I don't know. 
The point is, um, I'm on Team Stevie Lou when it comes to the Chad Stevie Lou fight. I don't know about first, you know, Ch just the fact that Chad has to be better. Chad was literally like yelling at Stevie Lou. Stevie Lou, I'm above you, dude. I'm above you, dude. I've done more comedy than you. I work in more clubs than you. I'm I'm hot. You're below me, bro. It's like imagine yelling at Stevie Lou that. When we met Stevie Lou a little less than a year ago, he had 270 Twitter followers. Imagine having to yell at that, that it's below you. I like Stevie Lou, and I don't even have to even acknowledge that he's below me. Of course, of course he's below me. He knows that. We don't need to talk about it. I would never yell at him. I think he's a nice man. And by the way, one day he might be above me. More importantly, you know. I mean, who knows? He's hanging out with a lot of movers and shakers in the horror film industry. You know, I, I just love this idea of like, and what? Chad's screaming, I'm above you, dude, to Stevie Lou. I mean, what, what are we, where do you collect your prize? One of the one of the most pathetic things. I don't know. Maybe we'll watch it now. Do you want to watch it now? Should we just watch Chad's whole thing now? And I do a five hour show tonight. I don't know if I have it in me. I got to go down to the uh, venue for Onion Con tonight and uh, do our final uh, negosh. Negosh, and then we'll be announcing uh, very soon uh, tickets on sale for Onion Fest 24. Onion, Fe Onion Fest 24. Corey Adam or uh, Chad Zumach? What do you guys want to watch? I can't see the chat. So the richest person wins. Whoever has money to tell me what we're watching, they can do it. Because I can't. For my own mental health, I'm acknowledging that I can't look at the regular chat anymore. I'll, I'll admit it. I'll admit it. You guys win. I don't know who's behind it. Some sort of psyop. I don't know who funds it. Chandler or uh, Spurgtopium. That should be a drug. Spurgtopium. Have you guys thought about making that? And bottling it as some sort of um, life-altering drug. Spurgtopium. Because Corey Adam did a morning show um, at... Two o'clock his time, p.m. Yeah, I think at 2 p.m., Corey time, he did a morning show today. Um. Please watch me, Patrick. Oh, so Corey wants to be watched. Corey likes to be watched. I don't know, but I said this was an, a post-MLC hang. Do I dare look what the chat's saying? See what they want. Corey or uh, or Ch or uh, Chad, okay. I'm sh I'm I'm unhiding the chat for a minute. Corey or Chad, be nice. I can't take anybody with uh, being dumb. And I'm sorry for being mean. Hack Hack vs Anonymous and whoever said the thing about no, whoever said the thing about pre screening. I don't. I I need to leave. You can't be that high. Chad, 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 Chad. It's Chad. People want to laugh at Chad. People want to laugh at Chad. They want Chad. All right, we'll save Corey. Corey's so boring, people don't even want to laugh at him. They just want to laugh at Chad. Oof. Again, Melton? How dare you? Don't make me cover the chat again. 
Don't make me come on a jet again. Oh, yeah. Oh, Kushkin gifting five memberships. Okay, here we go. I didn't see. I've only seen a part of this in the middle, in the very end. So I didn't. I missed the middle. Everyone's saying Chad's on cocaine or pills. Everyone's saying it. I, I can't tell. You're going to have to be the judge. you got to look in, really, really zoom in. What I will say is something's up. I don't know if he's on an herbal tea or a five-hour estrogen. You know, I, I don't know what he's taking, but his pupils are dilated. Gino got a membership. Yeah, but there's a lot of fake Genos, so you got to be careful with that. All right, here's Chad. I mean, again, one of the most foolish shows I've ever seen in my life. Like a real, real idiot. Kush King, thank you very much. Guys, we're uh, 1.5 thousand members. We're really, really down. So we're going to need you to start towing the company line. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, no. Chad. 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 I never watch Melton. I never watch Melton. I never watch Melton. Good luck, Melton. Good luck. What I told you, Chad. What I told you. We pull them. Hello? Hello? You think it's my first rodeo? We pull them. Chad, I got him. I got him. Do you think I need your YouTube? Me and Carl Heberger were texting while you were on MLC. He left it up. It's public. Grab it. Grab it. He left it up. He's too busy yelling at Stevie Lou. Grab it. It's available. This is the most embarrassing thing you've done in a while, Chad, and I still have it, stupid. By the way, the fact that you've deleted it off YouTube means I'm no longer stealing your YouTube copyright. <laughs> you don't even have... <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. All right. <laughs> you got us, Chad. You really got us. Good luck bringing a frown to the shark's face. I mean, I can almost guarantee if we could see the shark's face right now, he'd be like, how do they? How do they do it every time? Why don't I ever learn? How do they get the best of me every time? Do you think I would dare cover a show that I haven't pulled? We pull. We pull. We pull. Hit the like button. <laughs> Hell no. Not today. So he's bouncing, and if you watch it, he's grind he's grinding his teeth. His his upper lip, even though it doesn't exist, also somehow covered in sweat. Pupils dilated. You let me know. I'm not the nursing school student. Maybe Kate Meany could call it. Not this week. But he's also, I've never seen him this high energy. I mean, he might have, he might have scored an eight ball. Comb his cocks, everybody. Midweek makeup show. It's me, the mud show. Or he's just drunk. The Z man, Florida's most wanted, Mr. I 90. I mean, this is self soothing autistic behavior. He's just blinking an image on a knot. He's rocking. Five, the loss and ship dip consumer. The 2.4 GPA, grade point average, Kent State general studies degree major coming live and direct from a rainy, rainy Tampa, Florida. Look at him. Just rocking. Keeps clicking and blinking this image on and off. 
I got to say, I, I, uh, if Gino and Keanu are really watching, if that's true, I'm telling you what, man, it's going to be such a fucking reality check for Chad to get there, have not only no fucking fans, I don't know where he thinks these fans are hiding. He's like, you'll see, Melton. Where are these fans? Second of all, if Gino doesn't do this show, it really all is in Gino's hands at this point. If Gino doesn't do this show, Chad has nobody but Mazer. And the house of cards he's built about this, no, I wanted these guys to make it weird, comes crashing down. No, you want you had to invite enemies because you don't have friends. You had to invite Melton, Ray, Gino, Keanu, Stevie, Luke, because you don't have friends. The guy who's always yelling about friends, guess what? Lacks friends. And therefore, even virtual friends. And therefore, you had to ask enemies. And you'll find out if Keanu, if Gino, don't show or back out formally, then what? Then what? You don't have any friends, dude. You don't have, like, for all this screaming about friends, and this will be the last time I ever fucking do it, for all this screaming about fucking friends, you don't have anyone. And we'll find out. People are saying Gino and Keanu already backed out. They were never going. Great. We'll get to see what you can do, Chad. And don't forget your promise. I think people are going to be pretty surprised at what we're doing. And I said, no, it'll be a giant fucked up pile of shit. And you said, I think people will be pretty surprised at what we're doing. 32 days, Piggy. 32 days. Tick tock. When this started, it was two months out. And then you announced the show. And now we're one month out, and the show's falling apart. When this started, we were two months out. You were buddy-buddy with Kevin. And I said, I'm not worried about it, because I know one thing in the MLC universe, if you're buddy-buddies now, in two months you won't be. And I know who will be. Because that's how this works. Kevin gets tired of people. Kevin befriends people. Kevin gets tired of those people. Kevin befriends other people. So, I mean, it's, it's very predictable stuff. And look what's happening. Slowly and surely, you see Kevin going back to Ray, Kevin going back to Stevie Lou. Even Melton was on the other night, I heard, and they got along. Chad getting upset. Chad spiraling. Chad telling everyone, I don't run away from Melton. That's his reality. Then Carl comes out, puts out a clip. More people than anyone who watches this Universal see. Telling everyone Chad runs away from Melton. There are three to four instances of it on tape. The minute he finds out he's being sniped, he hides. Hides. No. No, I don't. No, I don't. So when he sees Carl release this clip, he's just like, "What? why is Carl covering for Melton and lying? It's like, what? What? Uh- yeah. Woo! So he has, I, I imagine he's either on some sort of drugs or some sort of drinking. Because he woke up today the, to this, uh, who are these podcast clips? Trashing him and calling him a coward pussy for running when he gets sniped and he calls himself the sniper. So already he's on a bender. He's all, By noon, he's already fucked. Again, anybody who has any clue to what he might be on here, let us know. Woo! Episode 57, they said we couldn't do it. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. I'm having a great day. Ain't nobody going to bring me down. Woo-wee. Yeah, Kumia's cucks, everybody. Woo! We're doing it. We're doing it. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Great to be here, everybody. Thank you. What's sad is he only does like 38 to 58 minute shows. And if you took out all the like, we're doing it, we're doing it, yeah, we're doing it. 
Flat guy Jessica gets it. We're doing it. Like if you take all that out, it's like, you know, down to 30 minutes. And then you take all the hot sauce promos and we're we're down to 20 minutes. And you take out all the, this will be up later and join the Patreon and hit the bell. Whoa. Whoa. Melton missed the best part. Okay, we can go back. Sorry about that. I, I am uh, getting a bong ready. Kevin will be happy to. Happy to know. Everybody, it's not happening. It's not happening. Good luck bringing a frown. And meth, you know, meth makes sense because his mouth is getting more and more gangly. His mouth is getting just gangly. But he, I mean, he is bouncing. He is vibrating here. To the shark's face. Hell no. Not today. Not this week. Woo! Come here, Cox, everybody. Midweek <laughs> makeup show. It's me, the Mud Shark. Remember, he started all this to impress KB. He doesn't even know why he's doing this anymore. He started all this at the end of 2022 and 2023, beginning when, when Kevin started having the fallout with... Uh, with Anthony Cumia. So, of course, a good little soldier that Chad is. Chad goes, you know, I'll start making fun of Cumia too. Who needs Cumia? I'm making 50 bucks a show, even though I haven't done the math. So, that's why Chad started this show. He doesn't even know why he's doing it anymore. You know, a heart attack later and, you know, 10 months. And now Chad just, Cumia's Cox is just another... Vanilla Chad reads the chat show. So the Z Man, Florida's most wanted. Yep, three minutes of every show are all his nicknames. I ninety five, Lawson's Chip Dip, Fuck Boy, Mister I ninety five, the Lawson Chip Dip consumer. Yeah, the two point four GPA, grade point average. Kent State General Studies degree. We get it. Your epitaph. Major coming live and direct from a rainy, rainy Tampa, Florida. Yeah. You can't stop rocking. Uh, woo! Episode 57. They said we couldn't do it. Hit the. You already said that. Like button. Yeah, I mean, he's on something. There's no doubt. Uh, Adderall just went generic. Everyone's saying some kind of speed. I mean, he's vibrating. He's he's back and forth, vibrating back and forth, rocking back and forth. It's disconcerting. Hit the like button. And again, this whole time he's been clicking on and off a graphic. This whole time. So his finger is clicking a button every second. I mean, this is manic shit. I'm having a great day. Ain't nobody going to bring me down. I mean, he's already said this several times. Woo-wee! Kenny fucking Powers, yep. Yeah, Kumia's cucks, everybody. Yeah, everybody. Woo! We're doing it! We're doing it! Woo! <laughs> Great to be here, everybody. Thank you for tuning into the program. This is a makeup from Saturday because I ended abruptly, if you will. Let's get the music bet off. We, we've we had enough. We've had enough. Why did you end abruptly Saturday? Why did you end after eight minutes Saturday? I forget. Oh, because you owned Melton. Right, 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 right. WCW Sting theme song. Uh... I uh, abruptly ended Kumia's Cucks on Saturday because Kevin went live. He had Ray on. Ray was lying. He sent me the link. So I was like, all right, let's take care of business. Whenever anybody lies, Chad stops a podcast. <laughs> went on. Ray came at me aggressively after he struck me about... How come your dry bar special's not out yet and mine is? Huh? How come your dry bar special's out and that? And it was just like, dude, shut the fuck up, Ray. Who cares about your dry bar? You. You. This is the fourth time you've talked about it this week. Moody says, he says, abruptly. Wait, 
Just wait. There's so many. When we get to the middle part of this, it's so good. It's the only part I've really seen. It might all be gold. Special. My only problem with Ray's dry bar special right now, because I know Ray's. Hey, everybody. uh, Chad has a problem with someone's dry bar special. So calm down, everybody. You're competitive in his mind. He thinks this dry bar special is his ticket to the Mark Normans, the Joe Liss, the Sam Morells of the world. This is his ticket to gold. Somebody's going to discover Ray DeVito because of this dry bar special. I He's mean, been talk- Ray's never said that, and Ray doesn't go around talking like that. Ray never puts that out there. You know, again, Chad is jelly. Chad is more jealous than anyone in this universe. And again, he should be. He should be. Like I've said many times, he's the bottom of the barrel. Chad has nowhere to punch but up. So, you know, the fact that today Stevie Lou passed Chad as far as, like, public opinion. And by the way, it doesn't even matter if it's real or perceived. It's perceived enough to make Chad lose his mind on MLC today. Really, really embarrassing stuff. He knows it's embarrassing, too. He pulled it down the minute we were going to watch it. He's like, that was meant for my 170 viewers. That was not meant to be seen by more people. (laughs) Talking about this dry bar special before he recorded it, when he recorded it, after he recorded it, when the clips came out, dry bar, dry bar, dry bar, dry bar, dry bar, dry. That's it. Dry bar, dry. Again, no one's fighting this fight anymore. Why is this on Chad's mind? Why is this on Chad's brain? Why is he even thinking about this? Bar, dry, bar, dry, bar, dry, bar, dry, bar. Then it started to dip a little bit. He didn't talk about the dry bar a lot after that. A little bit. He would say, I had two number one specials in one year. uh, According to no metrics whatsoever. Zero metrics. There's no screenshot of uh, two. Chad, don't project. We all know you faked the number one album, too. So we proved it. We proved it earlier this year or last year. Fuck. I got to get it. I really got to get it through my head. It's January. Two number one specials. Any- Chad's a dry bar drunk. Okay. Where? And I'm like, okay, what What was the number one on it? iTunes? Amazon? Like, what was it on number one? It was just number one. They were number one in my mind. They were num- so the dry bar comes out. Finally. Chad said his uh, album was number one for two weeks, but there's not one picture screenshot of it. Yet every other thing he does, there's... Oh, look, we're number, when it was number five, he screenshotted it. But no, he didn't get it while it was two weeks at number one. But then six months later, he's like, remember when my album was two weeks at number one? And we're like, no. No. Because he was announcing it the whole time it was climbing the charts. You know, he'd be like, we're number 10. We're number eight. We're number five. And like screenshots, never a number one. It just ended. And then six months later, he posted... My album was number one for two straight weeks on iTunes. It's like, whoa, whoa. And then we looked at who else's albums came out during that time. And it was literally like Lil Dicky and uh, like there were comedy. Uh, you know, Gaffigan, I think, had one. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, fuck, dude. You know, Dry Bar from time to time will release specials. They release Ray's 20 minute special. And he won't shut the fuck up about this dry bar special. So my problem right now with dry bar is they released the dry bar special when he started kind of quit talking about the dry bar special. Now the dry bar special is on another level. Now he can't shut the fuck up about the dry bar special. The dry bar special is all he talks about. He doesn't. He doesn't. Whenever anybody, whenever you or anybody else challenges his, his uh, accomplishments, Ray brings up dry bar. Of course, ad nauseum. Or he doesn't out of nowhere go on and on about his accomplishments. He doesn't do that. He doesn't brag about his friends. Say whatever you want. Ray doesn't. Ray's not like a braggadocious kind of guy. Because <laughs> he really thinks that is his ticket to making it. And again, we we somebody figured this out too. You know, I never really thought about it, but Chad's the reason Chad picks on Ray so hard is because, um. It's the only one who who Chad knows he can win against, who won't fight back. 
you know, he knows Kevin will fight back. He knows, he knows Melton will fight back. You know, he, he doesn't, he, he brutal to Ray, even though Ray doesn't, Ray doesn't really go. If, if Chad stopped talking about Ray, Ray would never bring up Chad at all. You know, age 50. Let me tell you something, Ray. It's not, it's over. It's a wrap. Okay. Dry bar released a couple clips of mine. They got like 60,000, 70,000. Guess what I got out of it? Nothing. Zero zilch. I got. Well, I mean, that's not big numbers. Well, again, mine got millions and I didn't get. I didn't think I was going to get anything. Are you dumb? Man, mine got 70,000 and I got nothing. I got nothing. What did you think you get? A corporate agent who's given me three gigs and that's it. So that's all I've gotten. I didn't get discovered. Uh, Michael Cox at Jimmy Fallon didn't call me going, you know what? We got to get you on here. Yeah, no one. Chad, you're not good. <laughs> Chad, you're not good. You you think it's dry bar's fault you didn't get Jimmy Fallon? Is that what you're trying to do right now? Are you trying to blame dry bar for you not getting a call from Jimmy Fallon? <laughs> what the fuck? We're going to send a limo to pick you up so you can come to 30 Rock and make $800. And no one's going to watch. It's not happening. Seth Meyers isn't. Uh, Seth Meyers and uh, calling. This is his beef with dry bar. Don't forget. My problem with dry bar is I got 60,000, 70,000. I got nothing. It's like those aren't. <laughs> uh, uh, Robbie Pratt. Netflix isn't giving me anything. It's not happening. Netflix. What world is he in? Netflix. <laughs> It's not happening. There's a reason why I moved to Florida during the pandemic. You couldn't afford New York. Nobody wanted to room with you. No, no, JK, JK. We all know you're very, very wealthy. What's the reason? It's over. I knew it was over. My last year in L.A., walking around there after the big Pat Oswald tweet, realizing how fake and phony these comics are and how fast they will turn their back on you at any given moment. I went from the uh, the, uh, the 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 queen of the ballet or the queen of the, the some constantly, constantly victiming so hard. Again, it's re it really is tough to to navigate those waters of everyone's wronged me. But also, I, I'm not the guy. I'm the, I'm the, I have all the, I'm the one who calls the show. It's like, whoa, whoa, you know. Because you're not. Because you're not. And um, Chad is a gay, not, nerd, 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 Nuremberger, nerd. I think that's true. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, it's tough. It really is hard when someone's completely misaligned with reality. At least Ray will sit there in his own sad soup and tell you he's a loser and his life sucks. And in actuality, Ray's life is far superior to, to Chad's. When I think about it. Ray travels. Ray talks to people. People who don't really know him like Ray. Chad's off-putting from the get-go. I'm not kidding. I, I I I wish I could have Chad to voluntarily do experience uh, experiments with. Like sit Chad down for for ten minutes with ten women in a room to just chat. I'd pay money to see that. Just Chad and 10 random women having a cold conversation. I'll prove it to you. I'll prove it to you. If I had my own Chad to do lab work with, I'd, pro I'd prove you he's off-putting from the jump. Something about him. 
Fearless. Chad gives stranger danger vibes. Yeah. Yeah. Ray's friendly initially. Ray's harmless. Women will fall asleep with their backs to Ray and not miss a wink. No threat. No threat. Uh, I hate to even ask KB. Would you, how comfortable would you be in a hotel room sharing it with Chad Zumach? Hmm? Ladies? Now, look, I imagine most of the women wouldn't be comfortable sharing a room with me for different reasons. <laughs> Put it away. The point is, chat gives women, I mean, just talk to a woman. I don't even read the chat. Ask the women in the chat. Is there ever, was there even a moment of meeting or seeing Chad where you were like, seems like a friendly fella? You watch Ray for 10 minutes, you're like, oh, what a mopey, sad man. You watch Chad for three minutes, you're like, and how many people did he murder? And when's he get out? He's out? I just assume this was a cell. He has posters taped to brick. <laughs> Thing. Let's put an analogy in there. Figure it out. I don't have time to think. Uh, to the man, to uh, who the fuck is this guy, Sam Tripley? Why are you hanging out with him? Why is he on all things comedy? Get him out of here. To Adam, Adam Eagat giving me spots after family and friends right before the paid regulars every single Monday. To Sarah Mello booking me in the main room. To this is all Chad has. Knowledge. He loves knowing people's numbers. He loves knowing who books clubs. He loves name dropping those bookers. Imagine how much he annoys everybody. I I can't, like, you know, me alone, he annoyed me, but, like, imagine him and Booker's. He's always like, I, talk, I was talking to this guy, I was talking to that guy, I was talking to this guy, I talked to so many people, I talked to this, I talked to that. And yet can still only get one gig a month. <laughs> Everybody to nothing, to zero spots at the Hollywood Improv, to a few spots at the Ice House. I knew it was over for me. At least he's not bitter. It was done. It was a wrap. I didn't want to play the game anymore. I didn't want to have to go to the comedy store to see Neil Brennan smug. So how come when I don't want to do that around Vegas, I'm a loser and I can't get work? I'm like, I got begged to go do a theater show the other night. Friend of mine texts me. He's like, "Come to a set." Yeah, I. Wh when and if I do decide to start doing comedy again, I'll, it will be at a club or on, on a theater. I won't have to go to an open mic, and you know, I say I don't want to do that. I don't want to play the game anymore. I'm the biggest loser you've ever heard of. Chad's like, I knew I was done. I knew I was finished. I don't want to play the game and do it anymore. Oh, but that's okay. Even though you are still trying to do it. Chad will take any gig he can get. We all remember that Somerville, Florida gig. Five minutes before he went on stage, he tweeted, I got to stop saying yes to gigs. Yeah. Yeah, man. You take any gig. You take every gig you're offered. Let's not pretend you turn gigs down, loser. That's one gig a month. I got tired of playing the game. I don't want to do it anymore. And why do you keep doing it? I love doing it. I'm going to keep doing it. I do it for comedy. I do it because I love it. But you don't want to play the game. Okay. Walk, walking around where Joe Rogan is. I didn't want to watch comics run out to the parking lot after Joe. I mean, he's, he's like drunk or fucked up on something. He's walking down memory lane, you know. This is like, again, everything this guy has is in the past. I used to have a condo. I used to have a car. I used to have a job. I used to not need friends to get rent. I used to not be a felon. I used to be able to buy a gun. I used to not have to work at Kroger. 
I used to get booked at Comedy Club. I used to work at Thumb Thumb Boulevard. I used to see Joe Rogan. I mean, this is pathetic. This is pathetic. If I ever start rambling down, apropos of nothing, nobody asked anything. He started the show. He said, I'm in a great mood, and then started being bitter. <laughs> he started the show. He said, nothing can bring me down today, and then just started listing his failures. <laughs> it's not going good. It's not going good. Chad is on a... And by the time we get to the Super Bowl, we could be looking at a full Zumok. We could be looking at a full Zumok. You know what I mean? The days of not drinking are over, but he's promised he's going to lose weight. So we'll see how that meshes together. We know he's a lazy pig. But we know he has no self-control, so he'll be drinking. And is he on Adderall? Is he on cocaine? Is he on some sort of meth? What's causing this speeding mania, this grinding of his teeth. Look at his pupils if you get a chance. They're huge. They're huge. They'll be clearer later on. I was looking at them, though. I was like, they're pretty big. Rogan did a set, and just to uh, stop him before he hit his car so they can network. I didn't want to see Tony Hinchcliffe uh, kissing Greg Fitzsimmons' ass to go on the podcast. It was over. It was a wrap. I knew it was done. So that's why I moved to Florida. I was like, I'm done. I'm going to go die on the beach and be a Florida comic. I'll do a few gigs on the road here and there. That was the goal. That was the goal. And I knew it was obtainable. I was like, I could do that. Whatever. I'm in the sunshine, baby. I'm in Tampa. I'm right by the bay. I like it here. He goes to the beach all the time. Most days, I'd probably say, Chad's down at the beach. So I moved there. Sun, the water. Chad's always up. I mean, he posts to Instagram all the time. He's at the beach. Rides his bike there. Chad and the beach. Chad and the beach. We can tell. He's not pale. He definitely is. He's not the type of guy to like broadcast or take photos while he's there. So he's very private. So he's at the beach all the time, dude. All the time. I'm, I went to Tampa uh, in 2017. Every afternoon he's down at the beach. When he's not podcasting or watching a podcast, he's down at the beach. He's not stealing credit cards or grifting blenders. He's down at the beach. Lance, on a Mondays with Mazer, one of Chad's crazy stories about L.A., was how he auditioned for a Netflix Karate Kid as an extra and didn't get a call back. On a Mondays with Mazer, one of Chad's crazy stories about LA was how he auditioned for a Netflix Karate Kid as an extra and didn't get I mean, that's not a story. Every audition I went on and didn't get is a story? Ugh. I mean, this loser's done nothing. He's done nothing in his life. It, it's fucking like I'm not even kidding. It's it, he's a fucking pathetic dude. He's like, I'm gonna go up the mountain and be like, okay, man, what? Go. It's like I'm not Chad again. I don't know how many times I have to say it. I'm not gonna do anything to you. I'm not looking to fight you. I'm not doing shit. I'm going to laugh at you. I'm going to laugh at you. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not even kidding. I'm going to laugh at you. I mean, you're, you're a fucking, you're a fucking IRL clown dog. A clown dog. Sue Ellen Mishki. Bob Levy for life. Even the way he wears his hat, one size too small, makes me hate him. Always with the hair tucking out. <laughs> so yeah i mean it, it's again it's how you know these guys are fucking terrified chad keeps going like what are you gonna do melton i'm not scared of you it's like you are terrified i've done nothing other than say i'm not first of all i'm not an idiot i'm not i don't lay hands on people for no reason 
Chad is like, I'm going to spit on him. I'm going to walk up to him and be like, okay, Melton, let's go. Well, you're going to look retarded if you do that. You're going to walk up and go, okay, Melton, let's go. I hope everyone, look, I know I can't stop everybody from going to this show. I get it. I get it. If I stop Gino, that's enough. But I encourage everybody there, please buy Chad a Tito's. Please get Chad a Tito's. What's he drink it with? Bless his heart. What's he drink it with? Melton, aren't you really tall? Stevie's 6'6". Six, six. I'd be worried about Stevie Lou. He's learning to box, and he's 6'6". Six, six. Um, I'm 6'5". And uh, Stevie's 6'6". Six, six. Chad's 5'7". So that's dope. You know? Maybe we'll get a baby Bjorn, and we'll strap him to our chest. And we'll just gently shake him around the casino until he falls asleep just let him tire himself out like we did with the machine guns the other day you literally just have to let chad get tired of literally you have to let him get tired of clicking the button just playing those machine gun noises and you know unfortunately with mentally retarded people it takes 10 minutes sometimes. Chad sat there for 10 minutes clicking that gun button. Thinking, heh, getting him. <laughs> I'm getting him. Wait, Chad, your days of getting me are over. You know, the fact that you even try to pull that video down, it's getting sad. It's getting sad. We've, have I not told you what I do? There isn't a time, baby boy, I'm going to be watching a show of yours where I don't have it backed up and ready to play when you pull it down. I even I even thought about playing the my copy from the beginning, but I said, then I won't know if he ever tries to pull it down. It's, it's funny every time you pull it down because then it's like, oh, he's watching and he's hurt. It's a double win for Melton, really. Over here at Melton Town. It's a double win. I know you're watching. And I know you're a blubbering bitch who's hurt. And you thought to yourself, I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to bring it down. Me and Stevie are going to get along great. Stevie, can you call in? I have a question because I missed uh, something on MLC. He said he just got done with boxing and kettlebells. If that bitch of a wife of yours ain't around... And you're allowed to pick up a phone. I don't shut up, Siri, you stupid bitch. Oh, great. Now I just shut my iPad. Oh, God. Again. I just, I mean, I just like, is it possible he's getting dumber and dumber? I don't know. I'm asking. I, I guess we got to get a medical professional or something. Is it possible that as time goes on, he's getting more and more retarded? Because uh, cause Carl from WATP said something today. It's like he hasn't grown as a broadcaster at all. They were talking about this other guy, Patty Michael, they do shows about. And how much Patty Michael has grown and learned and adapted. Chad is... Kumi is cucking. Again, I don't even think he knows the reason he's doing it. This Kumi is cucks. Uh, he's lost the, the plot. He's announced several new things. It's like Corey. Corey's on episode two of Coco in the morning. It's just like, yeah, that's the problem. Start a new show. It's, it's Josh Denny syndrome. It's like, yeah, March of the Pig didn't work. I need, I just need to start fresh. I gotta have a new name. I just need an all new. I'm gonna have to have an all new name and start a new show with a new idea. That'll be the thing that makes me pop. Doubt it. Doubt it. But I guess try. Chad doesn't even do that. Chad doesn't even try names. And and he and he has stuff for a studio that's just that's just 
sitting in a corner in a room? I mean, I, I get like there's there's new facets of being pathetic everywhere you look on this story. He thought he could build a studio. He tried. He couldn't. Now he's like, I don't even care. He He's like, I give up being a comedian. I knew it was over then. But then he comes to Florida and he's like, I still do comedy. We're still trying. <laughs> but you make fun of Ray for trying. But Ray's more successful and has way more gigs than you. Ray 100% makes more doing comedy than Chad. I mean, not even debate, right? All right, they're saying it's just ringing again. I'm having real issues. Uh, let me restart it. Give me a sec. Give me a sec, on DK, $20. Um, get a... I, I'm having a real problem reading. Uh, get a... This is so bad. I got to put it in dark mode. It's the only way to read it. Get a rotating set of the... The colors are just so bad, Moody. We got to get the light mode colors. Get a rotating set of hosts, the NLO network, while you are gone. Day one, Moody Day. Day two, Ray's bitchy sister. Day three, cousin Jill Day. Day four, Sketty Day. Day five, Lawrence Bradley. I mean, that would be great. That'd be great. I am going to put something together for you guys. I'm 50. <laughs> uh, crowd cat. It's Adderall, literally amphetamine. Yep. I, I, I see it. How do I hide that? Fuck. I'm fucking up here. There's DKs. I, I'm fucking up. Sorry. I'm trying to reboot the phone thing. We're going to get rid of the. Uh... How long is Moody around? Fuck. How long until we integrate the uh... super chats? We're working on something awesome. Uh, hello. What's up, Stevie Lou? Okay, so what did Chad say? He said no. Now he said you can't do it. It wasn't a serious offer. Um, he's claiming that he's only going to give me a few minutes at the very end. Like instead of the actual set, he's just going to give me, you know. I mean, so. I, I really think Gino and Keanu aren't showing for this. So he's going to need me. I mean, no, just me. no, just don't. Because my my argument is that he's he keeps going like, no, I want it to be weird. I'm inviting losers on to make it weird. But it's like, no, you aren't. You have no one else. Like, prove it, prove it. Everyone, pull out and let's see who he actually books for a good show. Okay, so because he keeps between, making excuses between... like, no, I, I invited Ray and Patrick and Gino and. Stevie Lou to make it weird. I wanted it to be weird, but it's like, okay, well, we're not interested. So now just make it good. Now just do it. Now do a good one. Invite Godfrey. Invite Florentine. Come on. We want to see who. <laughs> invite Louis J. Gomez, your buddy. You're going to go do the podcast. See if Jim Norton might want to do it. Yeah, if it's between doing the show out over at that shit room or doing dabs with you. Until we pass yeah, out. Like, well, we're not passing then. out. We're not passing out. I'm just saying, like, who else? Who's he going to book? He's got Mazer. Uh, you know, and I, I feel bad. I can't hate Tony Mazer. He's like, it's like hating a rock, you know? An emotionless, humorless rock. Ugh. And what is your, uh, uh, what's your I pick? Got, I, What's your opinion about yeah, Chad and the drugs? Do you think it's Adderall, cocaine? Ooh. You know, I'm going to go. His pupils, his pupils are big, man. I think he's just a manic person, and I think he's experiencing mania, and it's just <laughs> all natural imbalances. Dude, he's so shook by out. you. I mean, I, him just screaming, I'm better than you. I'm higher up than you. I mean, it's so pathetic. Well, he's a 20 year professional comedian, right? Right. But he's like literally, yeah, literally screaming at a guy with a day job. Like I'm above you. I'm above you. It's like so pathetic. So 
Listen, locked in, ready to go for AC. There's and you're coming no Friday? You're going to come Friday? You do a show with I, me and Bob. I'm thinking, well, exactly. And everybody says I'm the hot hand right now. So and I then, feel like I got to. Uh, and then uh, Kevin will be like, wow, you did a show with Bob. <laughs> you're right. Maybe I shouldn't go Friday. Shit. I got to rethink this. Okay. Well, um, you know, maybe you go on there with Bob and you be like, MLC for life. Fuck you, Levy. And then you run out of the hotel room. Oh. All right, buddy. I'm sure the chat is loving this. Uh, I got to go. All All right. right. Yeah, they do hate you. They do hate you. Over there in the chats. Uh, Anonymous, $3. What did they drop on Nagasaki? A Zumok. Fat man. Was that fat man or little boy? Now let me read this chat as... Let me read this as Chad Zumok. Okay, you ready? Okay. What did they drop on Nag as Ski? A Zumok. Fat man. Yeah, I don't know. You guys, that one wasn't worth it. Because he, like, wouldn't understand. He'd be, like, he'd kind of, like, be lost after it, you know? I think what we are seeing here is the final gasps of the Mud Shark one last ditch effort at being entertaining. I don't know. FKB. FKB. Uh, Beloved Chatter. Did that Maroon really think Chad made him a firm offer? Uh, Did he think he was on the poster now? Is it all a work? I mean, Chad, if so, Chad issues challenges like Melton, come do it. You can headline, you can do whatever you want. So if I accept it now, will Chad go, no, no, you're not welcome now. And then he threw that out about Stevie Lou yesterday and Stevie Lou immediately accepted just like Steel Toe with the boxing thing. And then Chad immediately backtracked, just like Steel Toe with the boxing thing. It was a, we were, I was clowning you, Stevie. It wasn't serious. Uh. <laughs> I featured for Nick Griffin for the very first time uh, at Side Splitters, and I had the best weekend of my life. Killed every show. Applause breaks city. Sold a ton of merchandise. Got laid by a 12. And I said, you know what? I like it here. I want to move here. And the pandemic. Flex 16, thanks for the member snaps. Hold on. What's on this one? Oh, that's Chad's. Uh, Cousin IT, can I get a free membership? I'm so poor. Um, I don't know. Yeah, somebody in the comments was that. I think if you leave comments and stuff, you know, if you interact with the channel, like videos, like subscribe, leave comments on past videos, then you get like, they, I, I, I don't know how it works really, but somebody, what I heard was that if you like the people who are most active on the channel, um, oh, hold on. He gifted one, but you're, hold on. You won't buy yourself one, but you'll gift. <sighs> I can't. I can't. Open it up, and that's why I'm here, and that's why I'm still here three and a half years later. Okay? I said I was Florida's greatest comedian. I still am. I still am. Okay? Don't get it twisted. I mean, that's insane. Imagine believing that. I'm Florida's greatest comedian. I mean, I know five dudes who would, like, first of all, I know five open micers in Tampa that can blow Chad away. Chad's not anything special. And I'm not backing down. <laughs> Look how dilated that pupil is. Tell me it's not. Okay? That's what's going on. Wreck me. Out of the gate. I ain't fucking one crooked tooth. Swinging, son. Brock Lee. Why isn't Brock Lee coming up? There he is. 
I love broccoli. Gives hundreds to Kevin every day, and only two one ninety nine to Chad. It's a, it's clearly a fake broccoli, like the fake Chandler, you know. But Chad's like, he's gonna be in Atlantic City, so that's dope. Why is Gino saying he's not coming the AC? Uh, good question, broccoli. We're gonna have to figure out what Gino's uh, plan is here because he already agreed to this. Uh, our friend Purdue. He didn't. He didn't. I mean, it's so funny that this all came out two weeks ago and Chad's just finding out. Like he he didn't. This is the problem when you don't book shows when you go when you rely on a fucking idiot. I mean, again, I don't know Ken Moska, but he sounds like a fucking idiot. He sounds like a goddamn maroon. Producing it, and our other friend producing it went out of their way to make this happen. So Gino saying he's not coming the AC is only fucking over the event. Okay, I'm going to tell you this right now, Gino. If you're watching, nobody's booking you. Nobody wants you. There's nobody saying, "Hey, Gino, we want." Do you hear this? Watch this pathetic switchity flip. He always says flim flam. You know, <laughs> watch this crazy shit. He literally goes like, Gino, if you don't come, you're fucking over the gig. <laughs> he goes, Gino, if you don't come, you're fucking over the gig. Gino, nobody wants you there. Nobody cares. But you have to come. <laughs> ah! Gino is off the show. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah, baby. I want to see the serious Chad show. The 80 seat tickets are already sold. We're doing it. I think people are going to be surprised. All you can give it, all you got. Never been to AC. Woo woo. Look at the pretty lights and look at all the flashy strippers. I want to see Chad try. Because this is what it's always been about for me. I've told you guys. What's funnier than a lol cow is a lol cow trying. Chad trying to build a studio. Where are we on that? Didn't happen. Chad trying to master YouTube. Where are we on that? Didn't happen. Excuse? I'm not one of these nerds, a.k.a. I can't. Now Chad's going to throw a show, pound it on his chest. You're going to be surprised. Wait do you see what we're doing. I'm Chad Zumach. I'm the Mud Shark, Atlantic City. Tickets are sold. You're all going to be surprised. What do you see? Meanwhile, all your overtures behind the scenes to to myself and uh, Ray failed. Gino laughingly accepted as a joke on air. And Ken Mosca told you he said yes, and that was a, a bad move because he didn't. And you all look like fucking idiots. That's what's going on. That's to catch you up. And now Chad has to alternate between telling you he doesn't care if Gino comes and telling you Gino better come or he'll ruin the show. I have a serious question for you, Mr. Melton. Oh. As the days and nights creep closer to the epic event in Atlantic City, mm. who do you think will have a nervous breakdown prior? Kevin Brennan, Chad Zumok, or the Anal Queen? I'll hang up and take your answer off the air. Chad Zuma. Chad Zuma. I mean, the the bag's been unsealed, and we can most definitely uh, start crinkling the chips, if you know what I mean. Uh, Sato Me. Beautiful Sato Me. Poor Super Chat Shuli Show two days before. TS said for life. FKB, thanks for the membership. Onions, love ya. AJ, a lot of broken English there. The Sato me thing on Twitter is really, really funny. It's so fucking funny. 
Anyway, um, <laughs> Zumok, is it? You to headline a gig. You asked your, you said, I will do it only if I headline and Keanu Holtz. Now you're changing everything. Watch this. Again, watch him say, nobody cares. Nobody wants you. You have to do it. <laughs> guess what, Gino? If you're going to continue down this road and you're going to try to fuck up ticket sales, because guess what? You have not promoted. Fuck up ticket sales. Guess what? You haven't promoted. No shit. <laughs> no shit. Chad, this is going to be. Again, honey, I told, I told you 30 days ago. I mean, TikTok. TikTok. What am I counting down to, Kevin? What am I counting down to? One of the most embarrassing moments in Chad Zumok's life. What am I counting down to? A show he told everybody we were going to be surprised how good it goes. That's what I'm count that's what I'm counting down to. Look at him. I mean, he's already panicking. It's starting to unravel. I mean, it hasn't started to unravel. Again, he knows there's nowhere else to go. The well for talent that is willing to travel to this beer hall in the middle of Atlantic City. Nowhere, by the way. Not, not near anything. You can't make enough money on this gig to get a hotel room. Again, I'd be, I'd be happy to, to get Gino and his girl a room at the Borgata to join us for some, for some fine uh, uh, whiskeys and... And uh, dabs, courtesy of <laughs> Stevie Lou. I mean, I mean, we're just gonna have fun at the hotel. We're just gonna chill. DK has got it. DK is gonna film the show. We're gonna. It's like he's gonna come back with a tape, and we're all gonna watch it. And it's gonna be great because we'll we'll be able to pause it and fast forward it and rewind it. You know, I'll hook up the laptop in the hotel room to the TV so that everybody who's watching the podcast in the suite, you know, I, I think Smokey the Spurg or the ghost of Mr. P is getting like a big suite. You know, so we'll hook it up to the TVs so everybody can watch the show as we stream. I'm excited. I'm excited. It'll just be what it'll be. I don't I don't want to be there to interfere with it. I know if I'm in the back, Chad will be knocking his knees. Look, I know Melton's here. <laughs> um anyway, I think it'll be great. Oh, beloved chatter's going? That's gonna be good. That's gonna be good. Because I think we'll get a good report from beloved chatter. So I want I wanna see. I almost want Skeddy Tooth John to go to see how many new jokes there are. Bless his heart. Chad Tooth's naked. Noch passiert es. There is a hack. Der ganze Gesang und Tanz, den ich auf MLC mache, ist ein Werk. Wir werden dieses Jahr den Untergang des Schlammheis erleben. Uh, watashito dati darishu wa chado ni mi o makasete, bara no tsubo mi o ipai ni mi sete, gemurumu o arukima waru tsumori desu. The reason I don't like it is because I know it's... Uh, U-N, U-N, U-N. <laughs> I know it's bad. I know it, whatever it is, it's bad. Are you making them Japanese now? You made Bob Australian... Hold on, can you make somebody Australian talk to somebody Japanese? How does it work if you just put Japanese words? Or Australia, if you just write good eye mate, it just kicks it into Australia mode? How does it work? Uh, beloved Chatter says, I won't be recording or laughing. Probably. Fair enough. I don't want you to record. I just like, we, we love reports. We're going to need reports. And then Chad will be, you know, Chad will always be like, it was fucking awesome. These guys are idiots. I don't know if Pat Dixon's watching. We're going to say, I want to set that up. You know, I don't even get that excited about stand up anymore, but I go hang out with Pat Dixon in Tennessee. 
And we'll do a show in uh, Chattanooga. Because, again, that comedy, the the owner of that comedy club, that chick loves me. She was at my special taping. She was dying. She loved it. And she said she would book me. And then I found out it was like, it's a, again, it's a two-nighter. It's like 800 bucks. You got to go to Tennessee. It's just like, you know, what are we doing? But I would go. I would go uh, with Pat. We co-headline just to have fun, just to shoot the shit and have fun. It will be the testing out new material. Yeah, but my new material is better than most people's polished shit. I would literally, I would write 20 minutes of material I've never, ever, ever taken to a stage, and I could beat Chad doing his special jokes. I'm not like, have you seen Chad's special? Do we need to fire up Kmart ready for everybody? I have it. I mean, four times during a 28-minute thing, he, like, asks the crowd to applaud. It's bananas. Chattanooga, not too far from me. Dixon and Melton, I could actually do that. I'm down. Yeah, I don't look, I don't know. Like I'm not saying we'll draw. I'm just saying like it'd be fun to do. Cause I don't really do that much comedy anymore, but you know, I, I look, there is something to it. I love doing it. I'm not I'm not knocking stand up, but the the whole YouTube special craze has kind of ruined it. I mean, Jesus Christ. It really is. It's just like Ugh. I told him I don't even want to call it like don't call it a special. Just call it just call it we have fun. Patrick Melton, we have fun. I'm not calling it a special. It's just a special. Chad com committing copyright infringement by profiting directly off Kmart brand and logo. I mean, I think they're virtually dead. I think there's like one or two Kmart stores in the country left. Let me go to the vault. Can you believe I have a folder that's called the vault? And I go in here and find a folder and I look through the files. Is there anything called Kmart ready? Kmart ready. 1080p. Dry bar special. Is it small enough to stream over the network? Yes, it is. Oh, baby. I don't think anybody's ever seen this in its entirety because nobody's ever purchased a dry bar membership. Please welcome to the stage, Chad Zuma. The crowd was really light. Wait, do you see how light this crowd is? What's up? Good to be here, everybody. Uh, I'm gonna tell you about me right out of the gate. I love to ruin small talk. That's what I do. I'll tell you what happened. A couple weeks ago, I was in an airport. I had a shirt that said Cleveland on it. And I'm just chilling, minding my business. The guy walks up and he goes, hey, you from Cleveland? <laughs> Says it on your shirt. Now, you're supposed to come out with a big, quick laugh. <laughs> and Chad's instinct is start with a long story. Start with a long story. So I look at him, I'm like, originally, he's like, oh, okay. So do you know a guy named, um... <laughs> and he's like, there's like 30 people here. Go watch some dry bar specials. They can, they can move these chairs. I mean, they can look at the empty space up here. I'm in the way of it. You can't even see it. Hold on. Bink. I mean, 
This is cavernous, this, this area here. You can see. So the chairs are really, really sparse. Oh, my God. I love cum. Cummy, cummy, cummy in my tummy. I'm a piggy, piggy, piggy. A piggy for cummy, cummy in my tummy. Oh, yes. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. Give me cummy in my coleslaw provided by big Newport cock. I am a piggy. He treat me like a cum-filled piggy. I'm sorry. That one didn't play right. Oh, my God. I love cum. Cummy, cummy, cummy in my tummy. I'm a piggy, piggy, piggy. A piggy for cummy, cummy in my tummy. Oh, yes. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. Give me cummy in my coleslaw provided by big Newport cock. I am a piggy. He treat me like a cum-filled piggy. I'm sorry. I don't think it's playing. Oh, my God. I love cum. Cummy, cummy, cummy in my tummy. I'm a piggy, piggy, piggy. A piggy for cummy, cummy in my tummy. Oh, yes. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. Give me cummy in my coleslaw provided by big Newport cock. I am a piggy. He treat me like a cum-filled piggy. <laughs> Tim Jones. This is how I end the situation. This is what I do. No one's around. I just walk up to him by myself. I go... You just say Tim Jones? <laughs> you said he lives in Cleveland now? Thanks, I've been looking for him. He's a dead man and I walked away. <laughs> Great opening bet. Great opening bet. People are saying they didn't hear it. Oh my God, I love cum. <laughs> Cummy, cummy, cummy in my tummy. I'm a piggy, piggy, piggy. A piggy for cummy, cummy in my tummy. Oh, yes. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. Give me cummy in my coleslaw provided by big Newport cock. I am a piggy. He treat me like a cum-filled piggy. I'm 50. <laughs> oh. I didn't look back either. I like to think it was like, I think I just killed Tim Jones. <laughs> Somebody stopped the guy. He's in a Cleveland shirt. He's a Somebody said huge pop. Huge pop. Yeah, it's not the first time we've seen him wearing eyeliner, so it wouldn't shock me. And again, a Z-Man jacket, a Z-Man shirt. As if I'd wear an NLO hat <laughs> during a special. I mean, this is... Frontier, I think he's on a budget, and he was. <laughs> it's like a windbreaker. It's like a... An all weather <laughs> fucking what is that? Tyvek? Good to be here. I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> By the way, best response that's ever gotten. Best response that's ever gotten. <laughs> I moved away, and a friend of mine goes, Why'd you move out of Cleveland? The best response I could come up with was uh, because I was living in Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been there. Pretty boring. It's the reason why LeBron James moves out every five minutes. There's nothing going on. <laughs> Just to give you an idea how boring Cleveland is, the Cleveland Browns went 0-16 a couple years ago. They had a parade. <laughs> True story. <laughs> There's nothing going on. Here's one thing you will never hear in Cleveland. It's so punched up that it's so echoey and cavernous in the room. Because you got to hear like the six people going, ha, 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 Cleveland, Ohio. It's literally like, uh, here, I'll get on my board. Cleveland, spring break. <laughs> Thank you. You guys are with me. You guys are judging. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. My dreams are coming true tonight. So he's already aware that the crowd's not with him. He's already aware that it's not going as well as he'd hope. And he's such a self conscious little piggy. He can't ignore that and just soldier on. He has to act like a nervous open micer and mention it. And this is just the beginning crack. And before long, we're begging for, for claps. Because I moved to Los Angeles where my dreams died. <laughs> so Dry Bar, this is your chance to send me viral. This is the only chance I have. This is it. Now 
he thought, I'll do that. And they'll definitely have to make a clip out of that. And then that might go viral because, you know, like, you know, they'll title it something cool like 40-year-old comedian begs to go viral, you know. He's like, I'll do that. I'll look right at the camera and say it. And they'll have to. So, I mean, and why not? You know, he already told the great joke about knowing the guy and the great joke about what was the other one? Being from Ohio. Oh, the Browns. So now it is time to ask for something. Now it's time to go, hey, I gave up comedy. Oh, this doesn't jive with what he was just saying either. He left L.A. during the pandemic because he gave up. But then at the end of 2020, he went and shot a dry bar special? But I thought you gave up. I thought you weren't trying to take it seriously. You're going to be a Florida comic, chill on the beach, do a couple gigs a year. That, or were you going to go do a special and beg to go viral? <laughs> Which is it? It looks like you were taking this seriously. It looks like you tried not to drink because you were in Utah. And you begged to go viral. I imagine you playing this in the mirror. You might have thrown a chair. You're like, then I'll just like look right at the camera and go like, I need this. I need to go viral. This is your chance, dry bar, to make me go viral. It's like, no, Chad, it's your chance to go viral. It's your chance to go viral. I got a couple clips of 60, 70,000 views. And they, you know, I didn't get anything. Rogan didn't call. Jimmy Fallon didn't call. <laughs> you sure, bud? Moved to Los Angeles where my dreams died. <laughs> so, Dry Bar, this is your chance. He might even be drunk. Who knows? Send me viral. Send me viral. Wore one of your most faded black shirts, too. Again, this looks like Mersh black. The jacket's gray. <laughs> the microphone's black. Shirt's supposed to be black, but again, he had. He's gonna do this to his to his uh, Zumaka Mania shirts too. You know they're all punchy and deep black now, but he wears every one of them in the box. <laughs> so, in a couple years, all those Zumaka Mania shirts will be all gray and faded, and collar stretched out. This is the only chance I have. We know, we know. This is it. It didn't take. It didn't take. And now let's do a little peen zoom, I like to call it. A little peen. Peen zoom. Okay, back to the special. <laughs> because now I live in Tampa, Florida. I canceled myself. <laughs> I went from trying to make it in Hollywood to possibly wanting to own a vape shop. <laughs> still doing that one. It's one of his go-to, go-to still, still pits. <laughs> I moved to Florida six months ago. I love it. My buddy says, uh, hey, man, let me send you some tourist attractions you need to check out when you go to Florida. I'm like, cool. He called me a couple weeks ago. He's like, you check out those tourist attractions? I'm like, no. He's trying to be a physical comic now. Hey. I mean, no, no jokes. Lots of stories. Very few punchlines. He's like, why not? I was like, because I found my favorite tourist attraction day one. He's like, what is it? I'm like, Tampa Walmart on Dale Mabry. Have you been there? <laughs> you got to go now. 
this second. Go now. My goal tonight is to make the team. Again, so dumb to do this local material on your sp I mean, it just really is dumb. But he probably doesn't have that much material. I heard Kevin the other day going like, Milton, you can do two different hours. Like, I could do two hours. Out, two hours of headlining material. At least I, you know, I, who knows now, but I used to. I used to could. Maybe I still can too, but I used to could. Of killer material. I could I could throw together three. But I could I could murder with two. And have. You know, I've had people come to both shows and not repeat one joke. <laughs> so I mean, yes, yes. I mean, I've been doing this over twenty years too, so it's not again, it's all it's all, you know. I generate 20 hours of hilarity a week. All right. Four hours of hilarity. Enshrouded in 16 hours of meh. And bookended by three hours of... If we're honest. You know. Cousin IT says, are you still yapping? Yeah, but I have to be transformative. That's why I, that's why I, uh, uh, zoomed in on his penis for 10 seconds. Cause you know, as long as you do that every 10 seconds and go, yeah, then you get, uh, to use the Wi-Fi again. Tampa Walmart on Dale Mabry, the number one tourist destination in the country. Because it's better than any Walmart you will ever see, people. It is white trash extravaganza. There's every. He didn't know a word to say there. It is white trash extravaganza. Okay. Thing. <laughs> going on that shouldn't be going on there's no rules dry bar has rules no shirt no shoes no service not at the tampa walmart on dale mabry you can walk in naked and possibly be general manager within three weeks it's also confusing because the crux of your material the name of your special the shirt that you sell is this kmart ready joke you want this joke to be your magnum opus as it were and you go into this hyper local walmart material and it just seems to me that anybody with common sense could tell you that one diminishes the other. One one makes the other not pop as much. That runs together. I'm driving home. I'm trying to remember a joke. No, because he said it was white trash extravaganza. No, he said it, he wasn't Kmart ready at the wall at the Kmart Del Mabry. No, it was the Walmart. It's just it's convoluted and confusing. I don't know why you would choose to do on your 26 minute special or whatever. Well, how much is it? I can't see that. 20, 27 minutes, 44 seconds, including titles and credit. To pick several, two several minute chunks about two rival retailers. <laughs> And again, as a as a comic, you're it's supposed to be, you can tell a story, but it has to be every 10 to 15 seconds a laugh. Every 10 to 15 seconds a joke. It has to be headliner. Like, fuck. He's going on these long, meandering stories about meeting people. Nothing's going on. Nothing's in the package, by the way. Nothing's where it belongs. 
It's like a scavenger hunt of whatever you want. You can get 2% milk, wasp and hornet spray, and Snuggies in the sporting goods aisle right now as we speak. Carol Baskin's husband went to the Tampa Walmart on Dale Mabry and never came back. He's not dead, he's in home improvement. Fake news, thanks for clapping. Now we have a thanks for clapping when no one clapped. A passive aggressive. So earlier he, he already addressed it, the crowd. He's like, you're not into it. You guys are kind of into it. And now he's saying thanks for clapping when no one clapped. So that's like, again, a passive aggressive swipe. We are... I can't even, I can't see the numbers from here. Five minutes in, and it's two scratches in the finish of the paint on this Jalopnik. She'll explain that reference to everyone after the show. <laughs> I went to the Tampa Walmart on Dale Mabry because I needed toilet paper. Bad decision because they haven't had toilet paper in stock since 1984. So he's doing all these pandemic jokes. Tiger King, Carol Baskins, stores out of uh, toilet paper. Again, just not very mindful about the permanence of a special and the Universality, universality. This is supposed to be global and relatable and evergreen. You know, if we're honest, should try to be. I don't, you know. I had to go with the second best option. You know what that option is? A beach towel and an oven mitt. <laughs> This guy's dying. This guy's losing his shit. <laughs> Again, this is one of the most sparsely attended dry bar specials. It, you know, they made the room look full, thank God. But there are 10 people on your screen right now. And I'm not kidding. We have five couples, and they just space the tables six feet apart and eight foot back from the stage and there's two rows i mean it's it's light it's light <coughs> i went to check out at the tampa walmart undale mabry and i saw the most welcome to florida moment i've ever experienced there was a 400 pound white male, socially distant, standing there. He had a tank top that said Kid Rock <laughs> that barely cleared his C cups. <laughs> and the fact that he was smoking a cigarette indoors did not throw me off. <laughs> it was this tramp stamp <laughs> that said Hooters, like the restaurant. <laughs> That's when I officially realized I'm in Florida and I'm here to stay. <laughs> Hooters, like the restaurant. It said Hooters, like the restaurant. Beloved Jatter said it. This shit ain't tight, bro. <coughs> Look, mine's not tight. Mine's pretty loose. This is embarrassing. It it seems like this wasn't thought about. What jokes to put on, what jokes to not put on, what what order to do them in. This seems you know. Uh, uh, fuck. I don't know if that was my neighbor or the president of Florida. Either way, I'm voting for that guy for everything, <laughs> forever. It's good to be here. 
Anyway, I'm voting for everything forever. It's good to be here. Tell you a little about, about the Z-Man. Ooh, you got to watch this transition again. <laughs> I don't know if that was my neighbor or the president of Florida. Either way, I'm voting for that guy for everything forever. It's good to be here. Tell you a little about, about the Z-Man. Uh, yeah, I'm in my 40s. So now he's saying, I'll tell you a little bit about the Z-Man. But if you remember the first words of the special, I remember them. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself out the gate. So now we're eight minutes in and you're, you're saying again, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Z-Man. Your first words where right? I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Z-Man. So, whew. <laughs> never been married, never had a kid. No one's happy for me. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. I always thought your 40s and have been married, never had a kid. You're a catch. Turns out your 40s and have been married, never had a kid. You're not a catch. People look at you like you're a suspect. <laughs> they want answers. Sometimes alibis. <laughs> I'm not dating right now. Anyone here dating? Ever seen a comic wear merch on a special? No. No. I mean, it just, it's insane. Not only one piece, two pieces. You know, I mean, he had a jacket made with this same Z-Man logo on it. This is the same thing that's on his shirt. The Z-Man, Kent, Ohio. It's same, same. It's same, same. I mean, I'd hate to see his underwear. And just once again, for the record, How do I get this player off? You know why? Because there's nothing yeah. left. <laughs> All right, anyway, you got it. Dicks. Balls. There's nothing left. <laughs> Dating right now is like going to the Tampa Walmart on Dale Mabry. There's nothing left. <laughs> Thank you. Please clap. I, I, I force applause breaks. I force them. Some people earn them. I force them. Please clap. Please. I force applause breaks. Some people earn them. I force them. Hmm. There's nothing left. Thank you. Please clap. I, I, I force applause breaks. I force them. Some people earn them. I force them. I mean, we're not 10 minutes in. One lady clapped, and then he said, please clap. Please Clap. I mean, shut up. Never talk to anyone again about how it works. Imagine. First of all, they didn't even edit it out. They're like, if we edit out the please claps... And that this isn't workings. I mean, that, by the way, that's the second thank you for clapping. Please clap. It's the second one. This is desperation. You know, Drybar filmed this and they're like, we got to put out something. But they're like, if we cut, you know, 
If we cut out him begging for applause, we're down to a 17-minute special. <laughs> yeah. Dating. Yeah. Right now is weird. <laughs> Back into the dating material. After begging for a clap. I mean, holy shit. Yeah. And now, of course, any body language expert will tell you, covering the abdomen signifies vulnerability, self-soothing. Yeah. But dating is hard. Strange. I don't know. I'm in my 40s. Literally, like we see Mooby do, just hugging himself. I'm a white guy dating her in the Me Too movement. It's over. I'm never going to kiss a girl again. The Me Too movement. This is late 2020, almost 2021. Me Too was 2015, 16. The Me Too movement. At the end of the pandemic, he thinks it's the Me Too movement. The Me Too movement is like to call it the ice bucket challenge of sexual assault. <laughs> where every white male on Netflix got nominated this year. <laughs> Thank you. That's a. He's shaking. He's got those DTs. It happens a lot. It happens a lot. Tough joke for some people. Some people are laughing. Watch as my can it shakes. I take chances in front of 84 people. <laughs> That's what I do. I go for it. I swing for the fences, kids. I see you up there. Take a chance. Now, this is all improv stuff. So it's like, is he, has he forgotten his material? Is he already out of material? Does he know he doesn't have enough material? So he's fluffing? You know, he's riffing again about how great he is and how he takes chances and... Stick to your dreams, kid. You know, like, this is all highly unprecedented during a special, which should, again, be rigorously thought about and planned. <laughs> or it could come out like this, you know. <laughs> I mean, he's just bored already. It's like a podcast for Chad. He's like, fuck. Do you guys have any super chats? That I could read? On dating apps. Anybody else on these nightmares? <laughs> yeah, you have to download. How about dating apps? Anybody else on these nightmares? Anybody else on these nightmares? Hello. You guys heard about this Tinder? Hello. What an app to find your love now. So you have to swipe right and left all day long. Right le right if you like him, left if you don't. So I'm like, left, left, left. He's explaining Tinder to everybody in 2020. Like you're not good at left. That's what I do all day. Left, left, left. I'm a yep. Chad turns down pussy all day, guys. You fucking stupid bitches. Get it together. Get it together. Fix yourselves up for Chad. He's so sick of swiping left. <laughs> Great, I'm going to go into real life, like go to a bar, see a woman, and just swipe left like you're not good enough. Oh, boy. Yeah, I just canceled myself on that joke. That's fine. I take chances. <laughs> it never happened. That was a pretend lady. Okay? We're going to go weird places, but we're going to come back. I'm smart enough, and I'm clever. Okay? I've been doing this for 17 years because I had a dream when I was a child. I wanted to make 3,600 a year, so I made that come true. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas Foundation. I didn't force that applause break. I earned it. So now he got an applause break because of a little impromptu rant he went on. Um... Which was basically a breakdown, but funny either way. You know, in the middle of talking, you just fuck. I earned thirty six hundred a year because I had to have that out of a dream. You know, so we like people started laughing at that because they were like, "Wow," because that was a real moment. People really laughed 
Because for a moment they saw a human being who has wasted his life and made horrible decisions. So they really responded to that, something real, which Chad rarely ever taps into. And then that shocks Chad because he's never probably had an applause break. A genuine applause break. And again, because Chad can't ignore things, you know it surprised him and you know it's unique and you know it's new because he wouldn't bring it up. Comedians don't go, wow, an applause break. And I earned that one. Chad did. Chad pipes up and goes, Whoa, another applause break, and I earned that one. So now that's a callback, you know, so that get, that keeps his laugh going a little bit, but watch it get right back to, oh, boy. <laughs> I bought him a little cred. I bought him a little cred. I got cred. You got great. I met a girl on a dating app, and this is a true story. We exchanged phone numbers. It was nice, pleasantry. Another one of these. This is a true story, guys. Cease and desist. Melton, I will not be mocked. Wait until Butch's cousins hear about this. Um, Chad doesn't own the copyright to this, so. I want to take her on a date because I'm a gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> Also, Chad sent me this. So. That's permission. Unless he, like, texts me and says stop or emails me and says stop. He gave it to me, so. <laughs> Hugging himself again. And I'm like, where do you want to go? And she's like, let's do something fun. I'm like, all right, yeah, let's have fun. She's like, no, be fun. I'm like, what? A buffet. I'm like, what? A buffet. I call my buddy Chuck. I'm like, she wants to go to an all you can eat buffet. He's like, she sounds awesome. I mean, he's killing now. He's killing. I'm like, no, she sounds pregnant. Like, who goes to an all you can eat buffet date on a date, let alone a first date? You know how that date ends? Diarrhea. Who's with me? Are you watching his hand? His hand is trembling. Watch this hand, the mic hand. I'm not even kidding. I got a zoom for you, I guess. Uh, uh, it's unreal. Watch it. What a fucking drunk. Chad, what a fucking drunk loser you are. Let's do something fun. I'm like, all right, yeah, let's have fun. She's like, no, it'd be fun. I'm like, what? A buffet. Wait, wait. <laughs> It'll cut back. I'm like, what? A buffet. I call my buddy Chuck. Like, she wants to go to an all you can eat buffet. He's Look, like, watch, she watch. Awesome. I'm like, no, she sounds pregnant. <laughs> like, who goes to an all you can eat buffet date on a date, let alone a first date? You know how that date ends? Diarrhea. Look Who's at it. Me? Look at it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I mean, come on. That's not on purpose, is it? And then he keeps like re redoing his fingers. It's almost like he's losing um nerves in his hand or something. He keeps like re gripping the mic. Mini stroke, no big deal. DTs. Yeah, I don't know. Shakes on a plane. <laughs> well, dry bar doesn't let Note, they don't serve alcohol. Obviously, if he showed up drunk, it would be bad. So I imagine he had to, like, detox all day. So he's like, we've seen this before. Like, he shakes like a motherfucker. I forced that applause break. He can't stop doing it now. He's so, he's, 
because he's so suggestible, he's put himself into into this state where he cannot let it go, the applause break thing. He thinks like if he keeps saying it, it'll become a bit now between him and the crowd. And then they'll applause more because it's now a bit. And then we're dumb, so we won't be able to tell. Did he just kill or was that? He's literally trying to turn applause breaks into a callback joke between him and the audience. It's insane. The only reason that happened is because of his insecurity up front. Please clap. Please clap. Jeru says the crowd is generous, too. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they tell them, you know, we're taping. 40s, I wrote a diarrhea joke and I got an applause break. My life. Yeah, that's why they call it dry bar, G-Rob. Yeah, it's in Utah. It's all run by Mormons. Rules. <laughs> Let's party tonight. When a joke does well, he almost can't believe it. <laughs> he has a little chuckle to himself. He's like, God damn, you are doing it, Z-Man. <laughs> With me. Maybe you should be a comedian. Huh? Maybe this hasn't been for anything. Maybe industry is going to see this special and, and it's going to start popping. Here at the Baymont Inn, 147, the hot tub's broke. Let's party. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Guys, hell, fuck. I'm just fucking around, guys. <laughs> Anyways. What a fucking yokel. Where were we? I don't know. I mean, I know you don't know, but why would we know? I mean, he's lost. He, he didn't plan this at all. He's like, I'm a 20-year comic. I got a ton of material. Again, I've talked to producers there. They let you go as long as you're doing well. So he got the light early. This is why if you watch Dry Bar Specials, some of them will be, some of them will be 20 minutes long. Some of them, some of them will be, uh, you know, an hour. Like if you're crushing, they let you go. Um. All right, let's focus. I just got the iPhone three, so I'm doing well. <laughs> These are all like throwaway stock line bullshit. Everyone, you want to upgrade? I you guys want to go see how many of these jokes he does? Downgrade. That's what I do. I'm not stopping until I own a rotary phone. That's what I want, a house phone. Because that's when I was at my happiest in life. We believe it. We believe it. Everything good in your life is a story from yesteryear. Every own you have on anybody is like, you have to get in a time machine to get there. Everything. Whether it's bringing Chad up or someone else down, you have to get in a time machine for Chad to win. Melton, Red Bar ran you off the internet in 2016. Melton. I used to own a fucking condo. I could have a condo anytime I wanted. Everything is, you gotta go back. You gotta shift your whole window. You gotta, you gotta move the whole frame for Chad to win. Because Chad can't focus on what is now. What is now is Chad is broke. You know, thank God. Thank God he gets a few grand a month to cover his bills and shit. Thank God. And, you know, in Florida, three grand a month is fine. So I'm glad he, you know, I'm glad he's not going to be living in his 2012 Honda. Not that there's anything wrong with having an old car. I have an old car. The point is, he should die. Because I hate technology. I'm addicted to it. I don't like it. I don't like it. 
I mean, it's not going well now. That was my point. I'm very high. But the, but the point is, I, it's not going well now. Chad's got to move the frame to win. Carl, you're so stupid. I used to have a place. Chet, uh, Steel Toes never had a real radio job. I had a real radio job. Everything's I had. I had. I had a brother. <laughs> but we need it. This is how I knew I was addicted to the phone. I lost it for four days a couple weeks ago. I didn't have a phone for four days. You ever not have your phone for four days? <laughs> Worst feeling in the world. I gotta be honest with you right now. Judge me all you want. I'd rather lose a family member. I'm just being honest. <laughs> and the people that are laughing knows exactly what family member they're thinking of right now. They're like, yeah. Probably do without Aunt Karen. The holidays would be nicer without Aunt Karen. I mean, this is just... I mean, this is open mic comedy. This is a rough year for Karen. <laughs> rough year, Karen. I feel you. I mean, this is all just filler. It's nothing. He just repeats stuff and repeat. Good name, it was. Go to bed one day, wake up, you're like, what? I'm an insult. What happened? <laughs> Shut your mouth, Karen. <laughs> Karen. <laughs> I get it, Karen. I'm with you. My name's Chad. <laughs> Enough said. The jury's out. That's like the Karen of men's names. Chad. Me. It's a rough name to deal with. Yeah. You mean somebody named Chad you want to go ask, ask like, hey, what fraternity did you play? He's flubbing a lot. You know, everybody flubs. That's why you do two shows usually. He's flubbing a lot. Ledge. Chad. Can I get a high five? So that's what parents do. You name your kids recklessly. You give them a name, you're like, I mean, they're being so generous. <laughs> Live your life now. I'm out there as Chad navigating 2000 election, hanging Chads in Florida. I'm dealing with all this. My mom named me Chad. You know why? Because she wanted to name me Elvis. 2000 election hanging Chads. I'm dealing with all this. What? <laughs> After Elvis Presley, her favorite artist. So she was talked out of it. Because there was a compromise. Because Elvis played a character in a movie called Blue Hawaii. The character's name was Chadwick. Chad for short. So that's my existence, a crappy Elvis movie. I mean, that's not a joke. It's true. Getting an applause break for this, it's not a joke. It was a long, boring story. So this is, you see what he's done. I mean, this is, this is awful, dude. Putting that in your special. Putting that in your special. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. And by the way, Chad, I swear to fucking God, play my special. Play my special. I'm friends with the people who produced my special who own the copyright to it. We'll strike your ass just for fun. You can't strike. You got to go to Dry Bar and talk to somebody there and get them to come strike me. That's going to take forever because you don't know anybody at Dry Bar. You got to sober up before you call. <laughs> Hit the like button. So, um, pathetic, pathetic stuff. Anyway, I hope I hope he does. We'll strike him just for fun. I'm I'm in now. Remember, Chad said. Game on, we're striking everybody. <laughs> so I guess I have to keep the tradition going. It's a family tradition. 
If I have a child, I have to name after my favorite artist, right? My favorite artist, Eminem. <laughs> but I can't name him Eminem. I gotta name a character he's played in a movie, right? He's been in one movie. You know that movie? Eight Mile. Char I think Eminem's been in one movie. Eminem's been in one movie. I hope nobody's seen the interview. Character's name? You got it. Be Rabbit. That's my child's name. <laughs> it's a family tradition. <laughs> Be Rabbit will come home from school like, Dad, all the kids are picking on me. They're making fun of my name. Why'd you name me Be Rabbit? I'm like, blame your grandma. She started this tradition. <laughs> you think you want to be Chad from Blue Hawaii? <laughs> Go eat your carrots, Be Rabbit. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I Look at that. Did you see that? That joke wasn't getting an applause. That joke was over. He walked to the stool to get some water because it's not going well again. And he goes, thank you. One, one woman laughed and he said, thank you. Thank you. And then everyone else guiltily started clapping. I mean, it's gross. It's so bad. Watch this joke fall on its dick and then watch him manipulate the crowd into clapping with two thank yous. Watch this. You want to be Chad from Blue Hawaii? <laughs> Go eat your carrots, be rabbit. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I forced another one. This video has gone viral, ladies and gentlemen. Second mention of a video going viral after an admission of making them clap again. And by the way, that one didn't even take. It was ramping up. I thought it was going to be one. It didn't even take. People didn't even come along on that one. Like a few people did it. They've had enough of Chadwick. <laughs> They've had enough. And then he and then he literally goes he literally I mean I can't. How do you I need the control the control keys for QuickTime. This video has gone viral, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Second mention of it going viral. This video has gone viral, ladies and gentlemen. Not even connected to anything else. What went viral? Your Eminem joke? I mean, that was shit. That was shit. Built on top of a foundation of shit, by the way. The Elvis story? <laughs> Not one punchline in it. You know, when you when the big laugh comes on, that's a true story. So I'm named after a shitty Elvis movie. That's the that's the punchline. So what went viral? He doesn't even know. He just wants so bad. He's watched and masturbated to so many of his friends getting dry bar specials. The fact that he even got this to happen is amazing. He probably used Ray to do it. He knows that you can go viral. He knows you can get millions of views. And he wants so desperately to go viral, to have those views. But he hasn't put any work into thinking about what bits go viral what are short, punchy ways to make reels from the jokes? He hasn't put any thought into it. He just wants it to go viral. And he doesn't know anything beyond saying what he wants. Please clap. Please make this go viral. Please. I mean, don't listen to me. Listen to him. He's telling you what he wants. I need this to go viral. This is my last chance. Please, this guy, guys, this went viral. I mean, it's pure delusion. It's pure insanity. None of, I mean, and then the, the, 
the three or four references to clap. It's fucking bizarre. But it mimics the template of a Chad Zumach podcast when you really look at it. Unplanned, winging it, thinking he's better than he is, repeating himself, relying over overly, uh, you know, confident on, on, on like the audience being there to fill in parts of his show. There's nothing really here of substance. If you boil this down to just stand a bit, it'd be like 15 minutes. Yeah. Anyways, I miss dating though. I miss dating. Back into the dating again. Hopping around and back into the dating. I was named after Elvis and back to dating. It's all over the place. First date was a fun date, right? You guys remember your first date? I remember mine. It was great. Ladies, by the way, first date, that's the best date you will ever go on. It's all downhill after that. <laughs> first date, the guy cares. He'll do anything. He'll comb his hair. He'll brush his teeth. He'll get a brand new offer from Kohl's. He's all in. The third thing is supposed to be funny in the rule of threes. The first two things are supposed to be basic, and the third thing is supposed to break the template, providing something unexpected and thus resulting in comedy. If you're going like, he'll get all dressed up, put on the shirt, put on the vest, the third thing shouldn't be put on the pants. The third thing has to be something different, has to be something funny. You know, I don't know. Put on his herpes cream. You know, it has to break the mold. Chad doesn't even know that. He's like, he'll get dressed. He'll look nice. He'll wear cologne. But that's not how you get a laugh, man. That's just not how it works. He'll call you like, what do you want to do tonight? I'm like, I don't know. And he'll be like, whatever you want to do. Here's the thing, he can't afford whatever you want to do. <laughs> but he'll make it happen. He'll take you wherever you want to go. But the next day, my man might be selling a Sega Genesis on Craigslist. <laughs> He's selling plasma. He's in line at the Coinstar. He's all in. Because he wants to make that first date the most special date ever. But if you keep going on that same date with that same person over and over and over, this is how this date goes 10 years later. It goes like this. I mean, this is a long time for no comedy. And this is where emotional Chad comes in. Chad's bitter. He doesn't like women. He hates women. We, I mean, it leaks out all the time. You hear how he talks about women when he gets mad at them. You hear how he talks about uh, April because he's jealous that... I do believe he, he is jealous of Aaron having, having a good-looking woman. So this is when the anger leaks out and Chad can't control it. Cause in Chad's mind right now, it's every first date Chad's ever been on. And like he said, you have to keep going on those dates over and over and over again. And he doesn't know why they don't like him, but we know we talked about it earlier. He puts out a stranger danger vibe. And now the emotions and the anger of his lack of ability to secure a partner come rushing, and we've 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 not heard a joke or anything even close to humorous in a while. And as a matter of fact, it's getting uncomfortably angry. Where are we going? <laughs> Wherever Groupon's gonna take us, get in the car. <laughs> but it's our anniversary! I know I gotta cover it. Applebee's happy hour, two for one appetizers. Be home by nine. Pun. Appetizers. Stars is on. Get in the car. <laughs> Just get in the car. Get in the car. That's the only time you hear get in the car. Three times in life a bank robbery, a kidnapping, or if you're married with kids. Get in the car. <laughs> get in the car. Get in the car. Get in the car. One. <laughs> 
to. Because that's how it was. Oof. This is from 2020. Yeah, and 2024. I mean, you'll see this in AC. He hasn't changed a joke. Bless his heart. You know what comes after two? Child abuse. That's what happens. <laughs> I'd be a kid in school, like, can you count to ten? Like, one, two, don't hit me, stepfather. <laughs> Whoa. You catch that? One, two, don't hit me, stepfather. Wow. Coffee mug, anyone? Like one, two, don't hit me, stepfather. <laughs> yeah. 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 Where were we? Where were we? Hang out with married people. I don't like hanging out with married people. My married friends are rude. Chad doesn't like when people laugh or when people have a girl. <laughs> Me? So I'm always hanging out with married couples, and they're always like, Chad, when are you get married? <laughs> I'm like, what? When are you get married? That's rude. Why can't I go up to marry people and go, hey, when are you two going to be single? <sighs> My Aunt Sharon thinks I'm gay. I go, why? She's like, you're in your 40s and never been married? That's a red flag. <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, I'm not gay, but uh, there's the thing called gay marriage, Aunt Sharon. It's a thing. It's like straight marriage, except gayer. <laughs> And I'm all for gay marriage. I don't care what you do. Do whatever you want. I'm against gay divorce. You fought long and hard for that law. You stay in it to win it. Do you understand? Thank you for laughing at that. Thank you for laughing at that. It's definitely a no for me, dog. Sometimes people don't laugh at that. Sometimes? Sometimes. You laughed, so... Provo laughs. Everyone laughs. That's how I look at it. I'm glad there's a balcony so I can get assassinated later. Why later? Doesn't make any sense. Like, you're not quick on your feet. This is why you're not good at podcasting. I mean, you can't speak about anything. You're retarded. You can't read, you can't talk, you can't do stand-up. You can't put together a show, you don't have friends. I mean, I, I just, ugh, misery with Mazer in Atlantic City. Just Chad and Mazer, and Chad's the good one. Chad's the pro, and then Mazer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get your tickets. <laughs> Where's my John Wilkes booth at? I don't know what I'm doing. I we know. Stop riffing. Nonsense. Again, a 27-minute special. Remember when he went on and on about my 34-minute special? He's like, 34 minutes? What a pussy. What a pussy. He doesn't. He can't even do an hour. So you have 27 minutes. Half of it's insane bullshit <laughs> half of it's an insane filler garbage i had always been a celebrity is what i'm trying to say
The crowd already feels sorry for him. These are bless your heart applause breaks. I mean, like it really is. You feel it. You feel the crowd going, look, we all made mistakes tonight. You tried to be a comedian. We came out to a comedy show where we thought we'd see a comedian. <laughs> We've all, we all made a huge error. I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> you feel it in that moment. I was flying here, and I was like thinking to myself, I go, man, this is the anniversary of my first job out of high school. My first job. Do you remember your first job, sir? You remember yours? What was it? Uh, Cemetery. Cemetery. That's weird. (laughs) It's a weird first job for a young man. All right, let's see what you do with that now. Chad's decided he wants to do crowd work. Again, we're 20 minutes into the special. Chad's out of material again. He wants to take some path. Again, you know, it's a special, Chad. Do your jokes. It's just like somebody sniped him. Chad, it's your podcast. Do your podcast. (laughs) So Chad wants to do some... uh, some crowd work and he's asked a gentleman here what he does for a living he's gotten quite an interesting and unique response and now let's see what he does what you can't just laugh at the occupation now create comedy show us that zumok wit wit for wit but you know those graves aren't going to dig themselves. The graves aren't going to dig themselves. <laughs> and then and then he knee slap with the mic like Chappelle. Fuck yeah. You suck caca. This is going better than I planned. Wow. Wow, this is going better than I planned. <laughs> that got a big laugh. <laughs> so mine, mine was, mine was uh, not as good, but it was there. It was, uh, it was Kmart, the department store. You guys ever had Kmart? <laughs> I worked at Kmart. Have you guys ever had Kmart? And then, of course, it's the infamous Kmart ready bit that we've all come to know and love. Uh, Raccoon Butterfly gifted one membership. Thank you very much. Dan G gifting five memberships. Thank you very much. Chad has gotten uh, too far out over his skis. Thank you. Jesus Christ, waver. Yeah, I think he's a little over his skis on this. Look, we're not going to play the Kmart ready joke because I can't show the thing in its entirety. And you've seen the Kmart ready joke everywhere. I think even the dry bar clip of the Kmart ready joke is online. So you can go see it on YouTube on their channel. And support dry bar by the special. I mean, really, that's just the guts to put that out. And call it a comedy special. Super, super brave. Um, there's not gonna there's gonna be shows. Um this week. Your manner is most unbecoming of a gentleman. Twould you be high on cigarettes? I don't know if the comedy hasn't hit them yet. They're full blown retarded or just high on cigarettes. The question posed to stupid hoes who don't get it yet Excuse me, miss, are you high on cigarettes? I don't know if the comedy hasn't hit them yet They're full-blown retarded or just high on cigarettes All the laughter that you deploy if you listen to the show Boy, Patrick Melton, Melton faces have you stacking And the low point is the low point, not the reason The reason 
Even as fucking gold to make the taco pony party be a party of soul To make you vandalize a van with a pedal sticker So bold the family probably get arrested before they get down the road A stupid motherfuckers just got NL loaned Other radio shows are straight bitch male prone Talk shit on the